Hello and welcome to this course. If you want to become a web developer or want to create your own website, you are in the right place. My name is Hol and I'm your instructor here. In this course, you are going to learn about fundamental web development from basic to advanced. We focus on HTML and CSS, which is what you must know first in the web developer career. In order to write HTML file, you can use text editor like Notepad, which is already come with Windows. But you also can use another program like Notepad++, PSPAD, Atoms, and Visual Studio Code, so on. Anyways, in this course, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code from Visual Studio. If you haven't installed Visual Studio Code, you can download it from visualstudio.com. For you must run any internet browser, but I am using Google Chrome, so you can tap Visual Studio Code, then hit enter. But to set the time, I decided to park this keyboard in a address bar instead. After you see this result, you can click here. I am using Windows operating system, so I click on the download for Windows. You can wait for hours. This program is being downloaded. Downloading is finished. In order to install the program, you have to click on the icons. You can read user agreement, but I just click on a sub, then click next. If you want to create a desktop shortcut, you can click it and you can leave another checkbox as default configurations. Click next and click install. If you want to run Visual Studio Code, you can check this tick box, then click on Finish button. This is the first look of Visual Studio Code. Next session, you will learn how to write and sell file by using this program. In this session, you are going to learn about HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is not a programming language, but it is used to organize and format documents how to be displayed on the web browser. Let me show you about HTML structures. The doc types declarations must be the very first thing in your HTML document. After that, you must write open HTML tag, close HTML tag, open head tag, close head tag, open body tag, close body tag. The two tags are written inside HTML tag. The head tags is used to contain metadata like title tag and style tag, so on, which is not shown on the screen. For body tags, it is used to contain the web page content such as image, text, or hyperlinks, so on. Now we run Visual Studio Code. To create a new file, you have to click on File, then New File, or Ctrl N for shortcut. Then we type doc tabs. Open HTML tags. Close HTML tags. Inside HTML tags, we open head tags, close head tags. Body tags, close body tags. Then we can write anything that you want to display on the browser. You can use title tag inside head tag if you want to show title on the browser tag. Then click on file, click on save or control S for shortcut. Choose the location where you want to store the file. Here you must select file tabs as HTML. Then give name to the file. You are free to choose any name, but it's so related to your project. For me, I give it a name as first HTML project, then click on sell button. Go to the folder where you sell HTML file before, then click on it to run on a browser. This content is on the screen, and this is title. 
In HTML, we must declare doc types HTML to tell the browser that a document is HTML file. And all HTML document must have these tags. Angle bracket, HTML, angle bracket. Then close HTML by using angle bracket, forward slash, HTML, then angle bracket again. We have open head tag, then close head tag. We have body tag, then close body tag. We use title tag to show title on the browser tab. The content that you want to show on the browser, you must write inside body tag. It is not only text, but it can be image, paragraph, or video, or so on. You must know that HTML use tag, which is written inside encore brackets, to format the content or style the element in the web page. You can see in this example, H1 is used to define a sentence to be a heading, and P10 is used to make a text or a content to become a paragraph. You should know that P10 try to add space between each sentences automatically. In HTML, we have many tags which can be used in a different purpose. Example, I want the text has yellow color in the background, we can use max tag. We don't need space. We save the file by go to file and then click on save or using Ctrl S for shortcut. You can see this mark tank. We have open mark tank and close mark tank, which is add yellow background color to our sentence. I want to have a late sentence, so I can use I tank. So again, then click on refresh buttons or using F5 on keyboard to refresh web page contents. It works. You can use I tank to have a late sentence or tag. All HTML tags can have attributes which is provide additional information about the tags. Attributes are always written in the start tag. HTML attributes divide into two parts, attribute name and attribute value. Just see in this example, H is a tag and HREX is an attribute name whereas Google.com is the attribute value. Each HTML tag can have different HTML attribute name and attribute value. HREF's attribute name is used to indicate the link's destination where the link should go. In the example, when we click on the link label on the browser, it will redirect to google.com. A. HREF. I want to link to Google, so I type Google to HREF. Between a you can set any content, including image. When we click on the element between a it will relate to the address that we set in a attribute. Save. Refresh. Click here. We successfully run google.com. If you want to make your text look bigger or smaller, you can use heading in HTML. This tag range from a1 to a6. A1 is used to define the biggest text, whereas A6 is used to define the smallest text. Just see the example. I am going to show you the difference between A1 to A6 heading in HTML. So, refresh. Now you can see, A1 is the biggest text size and A6 is the smallest text size. If you want your text or content has big size, you can use A1 tag. In contrast, you can use A6 tag or another tag different from A1 tag to have smaller text size. If you want to set the style on your web page, it can be done through adding style attribute to HTML tags. In the example, I'm going to apply the color to the sentences by adding size attribute. V5 
we have p t e n g which made the content become paragraphs. I want these paragraphs high red color, so I add style attribute to this t e n g by using color for property and red for values. You are free to use another style, but if you use color property for the value, you must set the color. Under paragraph, I set blue color. So, refresh. Now we have red paragraph and blue paragraph. There are many ways that you can format text or sentences in HTML. These things have different meaning. i s simple. If you want your text become bold, you can use B tags. If you want your text has highlight or yellow color in the background, you can use mark tag, etc. I have four phrases. So we have welcome to HTML, but it has no new line when appear on a browser. To fix this, you can use B all tag. Copies parts be all t a n k to another phrases. I don't need to put be all t a n k into the last phrase because it is at the bottom, which is not necessary. So it has space now. I want the first phrase has an align, so I can use. INS or use U10. You can press. I want to set yellow color background. Third, italic. We use I t e n and the last one I use S U B for subscribe. Now you can see the result. If you want to align, you can use I N S or use U t e n If you want to have highlight background, you can use mark. If you want i s t e l i c you can use I t e n g And the last one, if you want subscribe, you can use A U B. If you want to format your sentences as quote, it can be done by using Q t e n g Just see the example. Example: I want to show short quote on the screen like. Most students say they love learning HTML because it is fun. Now, so now you can see the result. It has no new line. It is not the same as we wrote in HTML body tags. We can fix this by using the all tags. Anyway, if you want to show short quote in HTML, we don't do it that way. We use Q tag instead. We don't need the bold quotes anymore. Q tag will generate the bold quote for you automatically. Save again. It works, but has no new line, so you can use B or tag to have break line. So, refresh. Now you can have a short quotation without writing the bold quotes in HTML file. Not all the sentences or HTML elements are needed to displays on the screen. So if you want to take note or include some HTML tag from the link to the browser, you can use HTML commands by using these signs. I have four quote. I want to take note who say this, and I want to use only on the editor, not on the browser. So you can use HTML command to hide part of content from appearing on the browser. This one from Dara.
This one from Prida. This one from John. And the last one from Bernice. So, you can see from Dara, from Prida, from John, from Bunny, which is I don't want them to appear on the screen, so I can use HTML command to hide them from the visitor. But I still can see from HTML file while I'm working on. You can use designs. Angle bracket, exclamation mark, double slash, double slash again, and angle bracket again. You have to place your content or any elements between these two dashed lines to hide those elements. So, it works. Now you don't see those names anymore. If you want to add image to your web page, you can use img tank. This tank cannot be used without SOC attribute because we need to set image URL or image address to SOC attribute in order to have image displayed on the screen. To add image in HTML, we use img tank and SOC attribute. Between these two pairs of the box for either directory or URL of the image that you want to add into your web page. Here is our project. The image is stored in the image folder, so we use image folder name in the OC attribute also. We have file names, birth, and we must know file extensions because we need all file names and file extensions. Right click on image file properties and you can see .jpg at the right side of tabs of file sections. We tap image forward slash birth.jpg and call bracket. So, then refresh. We have alternative way to set the image URL by place image address from any website to our project. I have image our golden retriever from pixel base, then copy the address, then pass it into SOC value. I'm going to add new image thing. So, right done, it worked perfectly. There are two types of list in HTML, order list and unorder list. Order list has sequence like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. in front of the list name, whereas unorder list has symbols instead. If you want to have a list like this, you can make your right one apple juice, two fruit, and three clothes, so on. Anyway, in HTML, you can use order list, which you don't need to insert the number like the ball, and it will generate the number for you. Open all things, close all things, open all items, close all items, copy and pass all items. To set the time, I copy all information from a ball and pass to a light tank. So, refresh. Well done. Now we have a shopping list. Now, I don't want the number, but I want to have symbols at the left side of the list instead. So, in HTML, we can use another list. For another list, it's similar to other list, but we use URL tank instead of all tanks. I am going to create a new list by type URL tanks, close URL tanks, open all items, close all items, copies all items, copies and parse to my shopping list. So, refresh. Now we have black point in front of my shopping list items. 
If you want other symbol, you can set style by using list style tabs and fill the style tab like this or so called so on. So, refresh. Now we have small so called instead of the black points. If you want to have black square, you can change the attribute value to square. So, refresh. Now we have square in front of our list. If you want to hide all the signs or symbol, you can tap none to the attribute value. So, refresh. Well done, you got it. If you want your element to start a new line and take up the full width available on the web page, you can use new tank. Honestly, there are many tanks which are able to take full width such as nav and min tanks, etc. But this tank is used almost all the time to create website layout. I have two paragraphs. So, refresh. It doesn't behave like what we see on the editor. So you can use p tanks to achieve that. But to show you how HTML block level works, I am going to use new tank instead. I want to create a block from a group of scientists to from speeding and another block from developed ad to for wildfire. So I put them inside new tank. So, refresh. HTML block level like new tank will take all available space of the browser or an element. In the example, the first block takes space from here to here, and the second block takes space from here to here. Understanding about new tanks is important because you need to use it to create a website layout. Knowing only HTML is not enough because it's just a skeleton on the web page. In order to start your web page, you must use CSS, which is stands for Cascading Style Sheets. In this picture, you can see two parts, selector and declarations. In CSS, we select HTML tag or HTML element to apply CSS styles. In the declaration, has property name and values. The example, we select a one tag, then apply blue color and font size to 12 pixels. To sum up, we have selector and the declarations. One selector can have multiple declarations. A declaration is saturated by the semicolons. We have three ways to place CSS in our web page. First choice is writing in line in the HTML thing. Second choice write in the HTML header. And the last one is by writing a saturated file by saving file extension as .css that import into the web page header. In line CSS, we apply CSS styles directly to HTML tag. We apply to the open tag, not at the closed tag. In the example, I am going to set font size in this paragraph to 24 pixels. So I tap font size 24pH. pH stands for pixels. So, Refresh. This text is bigger than before because I increased its font size. Second paragraph, I am going to set yellow background by using styles, background color, yellow. So, refresh. Now we have what we want. Internal CSS. We write style tank inside HTML head tank and select HTML elements to apply CSS styles. In this example, I select new tank to make all the content inside that tank has font size 24 pixels. Then I select P tank to apply yellow background color. So, Refresh. Now you have text style by applying CSS style by using internal CSS style in HTML head tag. 
internal CSS. We create a new file with extension.css that import into HTML head tank. Now, first you can create new file by click on file, new file. To have CSS style syntax in Visual Studio Code Editor, you have to save it first. I place in web design folder. Then I create new folder named CSS. Then select CSS file tab in save as tab drop down menu. For file name, you are free to use any name but it's so relevant to your work. For me, I set its name as my style. Click save. Now you can import our CSS style to HTML header by using Linrel style sheet address. Between the workforce in HREF is the place that you have to put the location of your CSS style sheet address. For my project, CSS style is stored inside CSS folder. CSS forward slash mystyle.css So, refresh. Nothing happened because I haven't written any CSS code in CSS file. Now I want to achieve similar result from our previous section by applying font size 24 pixel to this tag, and P tag has yellow background color. So, refresh. It doesn't work. Let me check for the mistake. Oh, wrong file name. The CSS file name is mystar.css. But I use only style.css instead, so it causes error. So, refresh. Well done. There are many types of selector, but in this course, I only show you four of them because we always use them all the time in terms of applying style to the web page. They are element selector, ID selector, class selector, and group selector. Let me explain you about CSS element selector. It is so easy. Element selector means we select HTML elements to apply CSS style. We select only HTML tag or element that we want to apply CSS style to them. In the example, I select new tag and p tag. You can see in the CSS file, I select new tag to apply font size. And I select p tag to apply background color. So, refresh. Well done. Class selector. We create a class in OpenTank, then apply the style to the class. In this example, I have two new blocks. First new block, I am going to add new class name blue color. You can use any class name, but it should have meaning like we create blue color class. We should create it for applying blue color. Please know that the class keyword is cannot be changed. For the second block, I am going to create the colors class. So, refresh. Nothing happened because I haven't written any CSS styles in the CSS file. Now we go to our CSS file for selecting HTML elements, we just use those element keywords. But for class selection in CSS, we must use dot before the class name.
So, refresh, well done. For ID selector, we create an ID in open tank, then apply C success style to that ID. In the example, I create an ID in div tank name first ID, then second div tank second ID. You should not create the same ID because it might not work when you select ID in JavaScript such as in jQuery so on. Similarly to class selector, we select ID to apply CSS style, but in front of ID in CSS file, you must use number sign or we can call hash sign instead of dot sign. I am going to apply font size to first ID, then apply font color and background color to second ID. So, refresh. Well done. Group selector is similar to element selector, class selector, and ID selector. In HTML file, you can create a class name or an ID in the open tank, then apply CSS style to them in CSS file. But each selector must subjugate by a comma. In the example, I create two classes. First class name, top block, and second one, below block. Then I apply blue color background to all of them. So, refresh, well done. Now you have blue color background to two blocks by applying CSS style only one time. In this session, I'm going to create a layout like what you see in these photos. We have header banner area. We have menu bar with red background color. We have white content layout and footer with black background. So create a new file by go to file, new file, save it. I store the HTML file to main project folder, then I rename the file as homepage. Then select file tabs as HTML, save. Docs tabs, HTML. Open HTML tank, close HTML tank, open head tank, and close head tanks. You can add title to your web page by using title tag. Open body tag, close body tags. We have header banner, menu, main container, and footer. 
So first, I create class name header banner. Save it. We have the menu. This class menu container. This class min container. So, open a tumor file, run with Google Chrome. I haven't got what I want because I have not implemented CSS styles. I am going to create new CSS file. We have to save it now. I place the file inside my project. I create a new folder named CSS to store the current CSS file. Select CSS file tabs. I rename the file as style. Save. I am going to import the CSS file to HTML header by using Linrel. CSS forward slash style dot CSS. I use CSS because it's the name of folder that I store CSS files. So, I start to select header banner, copy. Header banner is a class, so we use dot when applying CSS style. I set background color to the layout. I want this layout taller so I can set high to around 80 pixel. So, refresh. Then I'm going to create my new bar. So I select menu container. I set red background color to this layout and high around 40 pixels. So refresh. For menu, I will skip in this section, but now I jump to main container layout. I select main container. Background color gray. So, refresh. Now let's jump to footer area. I use photo tank with class name footer. I set black background color to this layout. So Refresh. It doesn't work. Let me check it. It might be because of no content, so I add this is footer. So, refresh, it works. You can see in the picture, main container has only around 
80% of the screens, so I can submit to this class. So, refresh. No, maybe I apply wrong CSS class. Oh, not a menu bar. Cut and pass it to mini container class. So, refresh. Now it doesn't appear on the center of the screen. So we can set margin to this class by using zero for top and bottom and auto for left and right. So, refresh. This layout will automatically increase its height following the content that we place on this layout. If you want this layout higher, you can set height to this block. This is an I'm going to create menu for our web page, but first, I would like to fix a small issue with this layout. You can see our web page surrounded by small white space, so we can solve this problem by set margin to body tank to 0 pixel. I am by to see success file. Then I select body tank, then set margin to 0. You don't need to put any measurement unit such as pixel because it doesn't have any meaning to 0 number. So, refresh. The white space is gone. Now I'm going to add menu like this picture. For the types of menu, you can use an order list in HTML. Open URL tag, close URL tag, open all tag, close all tag. Copy and pass. Let's see. We have only four menu, so I delete the last one. Home, our services, our team, about us. So, refresh. It has black circle. So we can hide them by using list type tabs none in CSS. I select menu container UL, then select LI. Menu container URL LI. Then we use list type tabs none. So, refresh, it's gone. Now let's change this menu to horizontal alignment from left to right by set LI tank to float left. So, refresh, okay, it works, but it has no space. So we add padding to this menu. I set padding around 10 pixel. When we set only one value like that, it means we set padding left 10 pixel, padding right 10 pixel, padding top 10 pixel, and padding bottom 10 pixel. So to set the time, we don't have to write all of them with the same values. Now I would like to comment the CSS style. So, refresh. It works, but it still has black font. So we can set font colors to white. Color. Wise. So, refresh. Well done. 
this session I'm going to slightly shift the menu position to the right size. Now we buy to our project. This is menu container, and I want to place menu item in the class appear a little bit at the right side. I create a new class name center menu, so I place menu item inside this class. You can rearrange this thing in order to have clean code with you. So, you will not get hit it when the project becomes bigger and bigger. So, we jump to our style. We apply to menu container and center menu. You can set background to something like yellow each time when you create complete layout in order to have clear looking on the screen. I set width to 1024 pixels. Position the red tool. So, refresh. It doesn't work. Maybe we need to add margin to that layout. So, refresh. It works. We have to set width, position, and margin also. If you want the menu items appear on the center inside menu container class, you can decrease the width of center menu class or increase the number of menu items. As simple, we have three paragraphs. As you can see, there is no gap or space around these paragraphs. So we can add space by using CSS padding. CSS padding allows us to add space around HTML element. I create use class name content. And I place all paragraphs inside this class. For CSS selection, I select main container and content. Jump into our CSS file. Dot main container. Dot content. Set padding around 15 pixel. So, refresh. It doesn't work. Let me check it. I increase this value to 35 pixels to see if it works. So, still doesn't work. For this issue, you can use Google Chrome Inspect Element to check for what's wrong with the layout. Now you can right click and select Inspect Element. I click on these three dots to change the view layout mode. I select Dock to Bottom. Oh, it doesn't have content class which I created before. Let me check on HTML file. Maybe I haven't saved it. So, oh, it works. Just don't forget to save your file when you work with coding like that. Now, if you want to adjust padding value, you can go back to inspect element again, then select content class. At the right side of the style tabs, you can use arrow key up and down to increase or decrease the value. So I think 20 pixel is perfect. So I copy this value and pass to our CSS file. So, refresh. Well done. This is an I'm going to add footer copyright info to our web page like what you see in this photo. Go back into our project. As you can see, I already added text to footer area, but you cannot see it because font colors and layout colors have the same color. So after I change this text, I will also recolor it to white color. In footer section, I create new class names, copyright info.
I take copyrights at my company. Click so. Refresh. Now you can see here. I am going to change the font color to white color. So I can select footer class and copyright info class. Dot footer dot copyright info. Color white. So refresh. It works, but I want footer block taller, so I can set high value to this footer class. I set high to around 80 pixels. So, refresh. I want this text to appear at the center of the layout. So I can select copyright info. Not this class. Take a line center. So refresh. Okay, this label already appear at the center, but I want space at the top of it, so I can set margin or padding to this label. I set margin top first to see if it work. If it doesn't work, I will set padding instead. I set margin top around 70 pixel. So, refresh. Oh, not working. I am going to swap with padding. I set padding top around 70 pixels. So, refresh. You can reach this padding values below 70 pixel, but I want to use inspect element to have live previews. I did this the value to around 50 pixels. Back to our CSS file, change padding top to 50 pixel. So, refresh. Good job, it works. This is an I'm going to change our website fonts. First of all, we have to know what font is suitable to this place on the web page. There are many fonts available on the internet, but not all of them are acceptable because some of them seem to be illegible. It means too hard to read. Anyway, in general, almost web developers use sans serif typeface because they are clean and simple, which website visitors love to read. In this example, I am going to use a font name Open Sans. First, you need to run any web browser. For me, I use Google Chrome, then I search for Google Fonts. Click on the search result. I want a font name Open Sun, so I type Open Sun in the search box. This font appears on the screen, so click on it. Click on the lady font at the right side. Then you copy this link and pass to our website header. By to our project, find HTML head tag, pass, so now copy this line from Google and pass to HTML elements that you want to apply Open Sun fonts. For me, I want my entire web page high Open Sun fonts, so I will pass into body tags. By to CSS file. Find body selector and pass this line. So, refresh. Well done. This is our current project, but I don't like one column. I want this layout has two columns. Main content, which is at the left, and sidebar at the right side. Now jump back to our project. Because main container class is the main content, so I would like to add new two columns to the class. I create a new class name content area. I create new one name sidebar area. 
You can write a comment to note about the layout that we created. You already know about the comment in HTML. We will not see the elements inside the comment section except we inspect element or you pay source in the web browser or in HTML editor like what you are seeing right now. So, I want the content appear in the content area class, so I cut it and pass to content area class. For the sidebar, I want to write something in order to note like, this is sidebar. So, refresh. Now we need to write some CSS code in CSS file. Isolate min content and content areas. Main container, container area with 75%. Float left because I want this layout appear at the left side. And sidebar, I want the class to show at the right side. Isolate main container. Sidebar area, I set width to around 25% because the main container has 100% width and container area took 75%. So I will set the rest available space to sidebar which is equal to 25%. Float rise. So, refresh. It works but still has some issue. We might be able to fix this by set high to make container class, but I will try to use clear fix in CAS first. Go to min container class to find for the clause 10. I will set clear fix between this class and footer, so I open the class name clear fix. I select only clear fix class because it doesn't in another class. I use clear bolts. So, save HTML file to refresh. It works. I want to set background color to these two blocks, content area and sidebar area. Back to CAFR, I set white background to content area. Background color white. For sidebar, background color gray. So, refresh. It show only at the sidebar. Let me check. Okay, to clear about that, I have to use inspect element. I select content area in Chrome inspect element. I turn on and off checkbox at the right side of Chrome developer tool to see what wrong. I will try to choose another color. Oh, it works. The problem is because our content area layout has the same color with another layout. I copy the color and pass to CAF file. So, refresh. Okay, it works. As you can see, in main container area has empty space around these paragraphs, but there is no any space at the sidebar. So I am going to set padding to modify sidebar style to achieve the result. Back to our project, I will not add padding directly to sidebar area class. But I will create a new class then apply padding to that class instead. I create a new class named Cyber Content.
I don't know what it take to this new class. So, for the lesson, I'm going to select main container, sidebar area, and sidebar content. Back to CAF file. Dot main container. Dot sidebar area. Dot sidebar content. I set padding to 20 pixel. So, refresh, well done. Now we have space at the sidebar. I want to add image between these two paragraphs. So go back to our HTML file between this paragraph and this paragraph. To insert image in HTML, we can use IMG tag, IMG, IOC. Then we have to put the image address between these two double quotes. I go to our project folder to find the image. This is our HTML file. I place image inside image folder. So we have to use image folder names, image names, and file extension also. I will use this one, hotel views. Dot jpg image forward slash hotel views dot jpg so refresh oh the image is overflow we can fix this problem with CAA code I select min container container area content and I am G10. Min container. Content area. Content. And I am G10. We don't need to put dot sign in front of IMG because it is a HTML tag, not HTML class. I set mark width to 100%. If the image has bigger size than content area class, it will show the same width as content area class. So, refresh. It works properly. As you can see, I added new two columns to the layout, content area and sidebar. But in our services, our teams, and about us, .html has only one column. So I will add the same columns at home page to all of them. Open our services.html and home page.html. I copy HTML code from main container class to above footer class to another HTML file. Go to our services.html, then select entire elements in home container class and paste our code which I copy from homepage.html. So, refresh. Okay, the information is from our services, so I am going to change its information to make it different from homepage content. I can delete image. I delete all the content and I add. This is our services. So, refresh. It works. Our services.html has sidebars too. I will do the same process to the rest layout. This time I will do faster because it is the same as before. I copy from mid containers to clear fix in our services. Paste them to our team.html. Select. Paste. So. And go to abadas.html. 
I select entire element container class in the file. Paste. So, refresh our services, our teams. I change its content to our team. So, I also change the content in the badass.html2. Check it. Our services, our teams, about us. Good job. This is an I'm going to add content to our services.html. Go back to our project. Our services.html. I will add content here. To save the time, I want to copy the content from the website. I want to copy these four paragraphs. Paste. So, go to our services. You can see there is no space because they just plain text. In order to convert to paragraphs, we can use ptang. Back to our services.html, I add ptang to all of them. So, refresh. It has space between these four paragraphs. Next, I want to add image and a title. I want to add image here. IMG and OC. I go back to the project folder. I place image in image folder. I want to add this one. Encovat.jpg. I can copy its names. Image forward slash paste.jpg. So, refresh. I will add the title too. I copy title from the website. Maybe add title about this paragraph. By to our services.html. Paste. Paste here. So. Refresh. But I want bold text. So I can apply CAS style to it. You can also use B10 like that. So, refresh. It works, but I don't want like that. I want to create a new class, then I apply bold font style to this class instead. I create a class name title. I place title inside the title class. Delete B10 because we don't use it. So, refresh. We have to write CAS code in order to make this class work. I can select min container, content area, content, and title. Back to CAS file. dot mid container dot container area dot content and dot title font weight bold so refresh it works. Now I want to add new content. So I copy from the website again. Maybe this one. 
I use the same class as above. This class title Paste title So Refresh I copy the content again I copy these two paragraphs Paste. I convert two paragraphs by using PTEN. Copy PTEN and pass PTEN. Copy PTEN and pass PTEN. So, refresh. Now I want to add image. Back to project folder. I want to add the image. I want its title. Just right click or click on F2 on keyboard, then copy its title. Check its file tab also. It is JPG file. So we have to put image forward slash file name and extensions. Back to our project. Image forward slash past dot jpg. So, refresh. We have new image but it doesn't show in the full width of the layout. So I can set new width to this image. Oh, I forgot adding greater than symbol. So again, refresh. Now back to CAF file. I add with a hundred percent. So refresh. Now I want a horizontal line to saturate these two contents about title. So we can use H or Tang or create CAA class. But this time I want to use H or Tang instead because it is not too complicated. H or Tang. So. Refresh. It doesn't work. Maybe I have to remove this forward slash. So, refresh. Why well done? In our team.html, I want to show three teamwork picture. But before we add a picture, we have to add new three column to the file first. Back to our team.html file. I will add new column to contain their class. I create a class name team member. Then I create three new classes inside team member class. First class name left call, I mean left columns. The second class name middle call and the last one name right call. I add text to all of these columns.
So, refresh. I will add CAS style to those classes to make them appear as horizontal. I can select content area, content, team member, and it columns class names. Back to our CAS file, content areas, copy. Then content and team member. And I select left call also. I copy and paste two times. We need to select middle calls. Copy. Paste. And the last one is right calls. Pass. So, let me show you. From here to here is a hundred percent of the main layout. So, if you want three columns, we have to divide a hundred by three. A hundred divided by three, the result is. 33.33. I copy it. I set width to all of the columns to 33.33%. Copy. Paste. Paste. So. Refresh. Okay, we need more implement. I add float left to all of them. So, refresh. Okay, it works. Back to our project. Do you see all of the three columns have the same value? To set the time, we can use group selection as you already learned in the previous lessons. Now I command all of them. I could paste the first selection. Pass. I could paste the second selection. We use comma in CAS group selection. Pass. Comma. I'm going to copy the last one. Pass. I forgot that sign. If you want your code easier to read, you can hit enter after comma between each selection. So, refresh. Now we have three new columns in main content class. We already added new three column to our team the HTML file. So this time we will add image to each of those columns. I want to add image here. IMG IOC. I store image with the same folder I had the image which we inserted to web page before. But these images are PNG file. So we have to use this image extension but insert into web page. I want to add team one image first. By to project image forward slash team one dot png. So the second one img IOC image forward slash team two dot png, and the last one. IMG IOC image forward slash team three dot png. So refresh. Okay, 
I want to add the names below each image. So we go back to our HTML file. I add the name below IMG tag. So refresh. These names don't appear at the center of the columns. So I will apply CSS style to them. I create three new classes name, team name. Copy. Paste. Paste. I move the name to team name class. So, let me back to CF file. I can select content area, team member, team name. Copy. Paste. Take a line, center. So, refresh. Well done. Let's continue our project. This time, I am going to add information to aboutus.html. Before we back to aboutus.html, I want to copy this content from the website again. I copy only two paragraphs from here to here. Back to about us.html, I paste it here. I convert the content to paragraphs by using p -tanks. So, refresh. I want to add title above for paragraphs. Back to our project. I use class name title. About us. So, refresh. Title class here is a class which we created in the previous lesson. Control F. And I search for title. Okay, this one. I apply font word bold to this class. Now I want to add map below the second paragraph. So you can access to the website called Embed Google Map. It's important that your company is located in Simbria Province, Cambodia. So you can search the address in the search box. Then the map will automatically appear. Then you can click, track, or zoom the exact location where you want to add to your web page. You can set width and height of the map before click on Get HTML Code button. Click on this button, copy codes, and pass to our web page. I want to pass here. You can add a short description like our location. Pass. So. Refresh. Now you have a map in your web page. You can add many types of content to sidebar, such as images or videos, so on. Anyways, this just I will add a link which is similar to the website menu instead. I want to add the item link from the website. I can copy the title. By to our project about us.html. We can use an order list. Open URL, close URL, open LI, close LI thing. I paste title here, then I duplicate LI thing for several times.
I move the title to align things. Copy the second title. Paste. Copy again. Paste. I will do the same thing after I cut the number of menu that I want. So, refresh. You can also add link to this menu items by using a tag. A, address. I copy the link from the website. I wrap the first menu with a tag. So, refresh, click on it. You also can create new HTML file and link the files like we said in the menu before. Now you can add link to the rest of sidebar menu items. If you don't want menu items access to another file or specific given address, you can add number sign to hrefs attribute. So, refresh. We have some problems. Let me check it. We have to delete the close tank because I already add them at the end of the menu items. So again, refresh. Perfect. Do you see the icon at the left side of the browser? It is called Favicon. The icon can be changed to another icon like your company logo, so on. To add Favicon to your web page, you can use link rail shortcut icon like what you see on the screen. I have an icon named Global has extension.ico which I store in the image folders. So in HPress, I put image forward slash global.ico. So, refresh. Good job. Now our web page has new favicon. Most websites have logo at the header banner at the left side of the menu item or in the footer. Anyway, this time I will add logo to header banner instead. I have a logo named logo with extension.jpg which I store inside image folder. Back to our project, I will add logo here. So we use img arc image forward slash local.jpg So Refresh This local is too big. I will set its new size in CFR. This time I use inspect element to check about the size that suitable for this logo. First I select header banner. I remove its height and change background color to white. But sometimes we don't have to use it. I select image. I set height to around 90 pixels. Then I will change CS information. Head the banner. We don't need anything. We can delete or comment it. So, for image, we set high to 90 pixels. This is header and IMG. 
So we select the banner and IMG. Paste. So I delete this tag because we don't need So Refresh Well done We are going to reposition the logo I want to move it from here to here this logo is inside header banner. I inspect header banner. I select header banner. I add width to around 80%. Position the led to. Add margin 0 to top and bottom and auto to left and right. I copy all of them and pass to CAA file in header banner. I select and pass it. So, refresh. Perfect. I already added the map into a bodice.html file, but it doesn't fit into the layout like what I want. So, Back to HTML file. Navigate to Map section. I rearrange this thing in order to have clean view. I set width to 100% and remove height and all of these CS styles. You can also delete these two classes, but I want to keep it. So, refresh. I need to set high value to make it taller. I add high around 500 pixel. So, refresh. Okay, well done. We have a beautiful map here. This season, I want to change website background color to gray, header, banner, sidebar, and content area to white color. Before back to our project, I right click to inspect element developer page. Isolate content area and change its background to white color. Isolate sidebar area and change its background to white color also. I want to apply gray background to web page so I can select body tank and apply gray background color to it. I also inspect header banner and advice background color also. You can see, I don't want the background color appear like that. I want background color from here to here, full width of the screen. So I have to add new layout then apply white colors background. Anyways, I have to copy CAS style to our CAS file first. I select content area. You can see style.cas then line 49. So I copy this style and paste to that CAS block. I copy background color. I want to find line 49. Okay, it here. Select and paste. Sidebar area, style.cs, line 55. 
copy, select, paste, save, refresh. Oh, I forgot to set background color to body tan. I select body tan again. I add gray background color to the tan. Okay, go to style.cfr, line 1. Copy. Paste here. So, refresh. I forgot to add background color to the banner class. However, I will create a new layout and apply to that new layout instead. I create a CS class name header wrapper. I place header banner inside this new class. So then I will apply background color to header wrapper. Copy back to CF file. Dot paste background color to white. So refresh. Well done. Now I have a beautiful website by changing its background color. We finish our project. We have homepage, we have our services, our teams, and we have about us which is filled with contents. So, in conclusion, you can use HTML and CS to develop a nice website with Simshoes Hour. In addition, this course will provide you a clear guide how to start front-end developer career, which is a high-demand jobs around the world.